You know, I've never really been big on listening to music with headphones. I'm talking about wired headphones that are connected to an amp or something. And on the go, I use a set of wireless AirPods and they sound, they sound pretty good. And especially when you're walking around doing chores, they're, they're uh, noise canceling and uh, they're great for like mowing the lawn and stuff. And in my room, I prefer the sound of, you know, loudspeakers. Oops. <laughs> and the experience is genuinely hard to beat. Uh, if, the, if, the, if the room is set up properly and you got good gear. But there's times when headphones are required. You know, like late at night or doing a, some critical listening. So when I decided to, to buy a set of headphones... Uh, for like under $500, I did an internet search and many, many experts raved about the Sennheiser HD 650s. It's a very popular model that's been in continuous uh, production for over 20 years. And I'm telling you, everywhere, everywhere I looked, people were saying that it's a stone cold A-rated classic and you can't go wrong buying a pair. So in March of 2021, I bought them from Sweetwater for like $400 and yeah, they're good. I always thought they were very smooth sounding and pretty comfortable, but they lacked some deep bass and a little dull for me at the top end. And, and you know, I've been using them with a variety of vintage receivers, integrated amps and some dedicated headphone amplifiers. So, and I even made a video that, and I compared them to the Hi-Fi Man Sundaras, and I actually did prefer the more open and punchy sound of the Sundaras to these. But I kept the HD 650s, as they're fine for occasional use, and I figured all those Hi-Fi experts must know something, considering they've tried many more headphones than I have. So a few days ago, I'm looking at the neglected Sennheiser sitting on the shelf, and I decided to give them a listen. And, you know, then I started looking at reviews online again, and I found a, another, more, a plethora of positive opinions posted in, in the popular headphone forums and on YouTube, and I'm thinking, hmm. And then I, faithfully, I clicked on the audio science review review of these headphones, and and I've not been shy about my disagreements, disagreements with a lot that's on that website, but I'm not going to go there now. But the head reviewer, Amir, gave the HD 650s a very positive recommendation. But he suggested tweaking the sound with some equalization to compensate for their, you know, measured shortcomings. Now he uses Rune, which... I also use on my Mac and iOS and EverSolo and Blue Sound devices. And he posted uh, some EQ settings for these headphones at the end of the review. And I entered the straightforward four band adjustments in Rune, and it did make an improvement with the bass, with, and it had more sparkle on top. Now, EQing has been a pretty common thing among headphone aficionados. It's I've been a Rune customer for over a year and I was not aware of this feature. It took me a little while to figure out how to access and set the EQ using the built-in Muse feature. And among other adjustments, Muse has a parametric EQ feature where you can load pre-configured EQ filters or set your own. And I wouldn't dare to make my own filter from scratch, but I, I'd rather employ ones created by individuals who use measurements and actually know what they're doing. And you can easily toggle the EQ filter on and off, and the difference is, is quite audible. So this got me a bit excited, so I started to delve deeper into more EQ settings for the HD 650s. And I found a website called Auto EQ, where you can choose your exact model of headphone and, and download a ready-made convolution file, which then it can be easily loaded into Rune. I also found and uh, EQ settings from Oratory 1990 that I had to manually enter. It had 10 bands and it looked pretty complex. Now by EQ, I mean equalization. 
You remember equalizers from back in the old days. Well, this is kind of the same thing, but in digital form. It appears these headphone boffins are getting their hands on a multitude of popular bottles and measuring their frequency response output. And from what I can see, they design EQ settings for each headphone to replicate as close as possible the Harman curve, which is considered the sweet spot of how frequency should be balanced for it to sound most pleasing to the average person. This curve represents the ideal frequency balance that most people enjoy when listening to music. And on top of that, many of these EQs are available for free. Well, I'm actually enjoying listening to music more than ever with the HD 650s. And this, you know, super impressive head, the, the, the headphone output on this amazing advanced Paris A12 amplifier is an extra bonus on top. The bass is much more present now and the high frequencies are better extended in a way that I prefer. Now you don't have to use Rune to enjoy these EQ filters. For example, Auto EQ provides settings for or downloads for like 28 different applications. Now would I use EQ on my regular loudspeakers? I doubt that very highly. It's contrary to my hi-fi hi principles. But you know, for these headphones and my specific uses, Equalization is making these very highly regarded headphones that I didn't really enjoy all that much. And now they're a joy to listen to with my favorite music. Now, I'm just learning about this, so I'm no expert. And I'll be looking further into this whole EQ thing. I just wanted to share this information with you. So if you, ever, if you feel that you're not getting what you should out of your headphones, you can try an EQ program on your device.